Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Minister, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's uh, a great pleasure to uh, join you today for the, what I think is the 13th Serbian Economic Summit, uh, which, as many people have already said today, uh, comes at, at a good time. Um, however, I should say at the outset that although I have been uh, in Serbia already for three years, uh, I still have not learnt that the session to avoid is when everybody goes off to lunch during these conferences. Um, we all are aware of the uh, effects which the uh, global economic downturn uh, is still having uh, on uh, EU member states, uh, as well as, of course, uh, in Serbia. However, uh, when perhaps we compare uh, looking at the broad picture, the situation today uh, with that of, of a year ago, uh, we can see, I think, some grounds for a little bit uh, of, of, of optimism, uh, with some positive growth returning uh, in parts of Europe. Um, having said that, I think it's important to be careful and to bear in mind uh, that there is no room at all for, uh, for complacency. Um, and bearing in mind, in particular, the very serious challenges uh, which the Prime Minister set out uh, and which uh, I think uh, Economy Minister Radulovic uh, also uh, talked about. Uh, there is, uh, rather than any sense of complacency I detect in uh, in those words, a sense of urgency. Um, so, one thing I, I would like to, to, to leave with you is the message that uh, rather than uh, seeking to rely on uh, external factors like global ec economic growth uh, picking up, actually, I think the, the message is that, that we all need to uh, increasingly take the, the initiative and try in, in our own countries to create the necessary conditions uh, for investment uh, and for uh, an increase in private sector activity. And Serbia, of course, is no exception uh, to that. The EU um, has an interest in offering uh, a helping hand. Uh, and if you'll allow me, uh, I'll therefore say a few words about Serbia's uh, EU integration process, which the minister has, has already introduced, uh, and, and, and a few words also on the impact on both private sector development and uh, economic policies. Clearly, Serbia is entering a decisive and new phase in uh, accession in the accession process to the European Union. Uh, on the 28th of June, the European Council took the decision to open negotiations, accession negotiations with Serbia. This recognized the enormous progress which Serbia had made uh, in meeting uh, the uh, criteria set for, for membership, the Copenhagen criteria, but also the expectations of successive European Council conclusions. And it also obviously offers Serbia an opportunity, an opportunity uh, not least to speed up, uh, Mr. the minister anticipated my words correctly, uh, to speed up its uh, EU integration process. Um, for all the 35 chapters uh, of the Aki Communitaire of the EU's legis legislative framework, whether it's economic and monetary policy, company law, uh, enterprise and industrial policy, uh, a very concrete and well-tested methodology will be followed to ensure alignment uh, and uh, alignment with and implementation of uh, EU rules and, and standards. Most of these chapters will have so-called opening benchmarks, usually consisting of EU harmonized legislation being in place, but also action plans adopted, uh, and where necessary, administrative capacities also enhanced, or ensured at least. 
negotiations on chapters um, will only be completed if the benchmarks are met relating more particularly to the implementation of legislation. Uh, and this is, this is the, the only way that we can really uh, measure whether the uh, standards which are aspired to both by the exceeding state and by existing member states have really been met. Uh, and as the minister mentioned, the uh, process, the actual process of negotiations will be preceded or is already being preceded by what, uh, what we call screening. Uh, and for every chapter, uh, meetings will be held in which, in the first stage, the European Commission will provide information on the relevant legislation to be adopted. And that will then be followed by the second stage of screening, uh, where the uh, Serbian authorities, uh, in this case, will present the degree to which Serbian legislation is already aligned with that of the European Union. Now, this uh, process already started three weeks ago with the two chapters, uh, 23 and 24, relating to uh, aspects uh, particularly related to the rule of law. Now, I think it's very significant in the context of an economic summit to highlight uh, that uh, th this new approach, as we, as we call it, uh, focusing on chapters 23 and 24 uh, is of supreme relevance to also the economic uh, agenda. Uh, these chapters contain some of the most uh, important but also most difficult challenges, such as uh, the judiciary, uh, the independence of the judiciary, uh, the combating of corruption, the uh, uh, issues uh, related to uh, the uh, anti-corruption strategy, uh, but also uh, the rule of law, uh, the uh, policies against uh, discrimination, the, the, admin the reform of state administration, uh, and uh, the building uh, of institutions. Um, and I think I, I would highlight that I was particularly pleased to hear uh, uh, Frédéric Coin uh, highlighting uh, a number of these issues uh, as having been uh, central to the priorities set out by the Foreign Investors Council for, for, an, for many years. Um, and a further point I'd like to make at this stage is that the accession process uh, is not just one for governments. Uh, it's of course up to each country uh, to uh, determine its own model, uh, but it is crucial for, for business and for citizens uh, who have uh, a strong, vital interest in the success of the process uh, to have a role to play. This is something which really does, in the real sense, affect everybody. So how ready is, uh, is Serbia? Um, well, in a sense, the, the screening that we just talked about is itself the mechanism for establishing uh, the level of, of, of readiness for the actual opening of, of individual chapters across the board. Um, that's the technical answer. The political answer is that the European Council took the decision uh, on the 28th of June to open uh, to open negotiations, we now have that process uh, underway uh, and the screening uh, is, uh, has, has started, will continue between now and December uh, and well into, uh, well during the course of next year and into 2015. Uh, the uh, objective is that we, uh, we should hold the first uh, intergovernmental conference as soon as possible after the uh, European Council and uh, in January at the latest. But of course, that brings out that we are at the beginning of something. There's a, there's a long way for, for all of us to go. Um, as the Minister also mentioned, um, another important recent development has been the entry into force at the beginning of last month of the Stabilization and Association Agreement. Uh, and this replaces and further deepens the interim trade agreement between Serbia and the European Union. 
It provides for gradual liberalization in uh, the movement of workers, rights of establishment, supply of services, and movement of capital. Uh, and this will guarantee equal treatment between Serbian and EU citizens and companies on both the Serbian and the EU markets. It also ensures gradual approximation of Serbian laws in areas such as public procurement, standardization, consumer protection, and working conditions. There are three, I think, p particular advantages of the Stabilization and Association Agreement which is worth highlighting. First, it will facilitate Serbian companies gradually getting used to EU standards and a more competitive environment. And this will help to prepare them to compete better on the EU market. Secondly, it provides a more predictable legal environment, again, precisely the point that Frédéric Coin made, uh, which will contribute to a safer framework and a better business climate for investors. And this will undoubtedly contribute to uh, encouraging uh, more EU firms to come to Serbia. Thirdly, it will bring benefits for Serbian citizens and consumers who will be able to benefit from a wider choice of good quality products against price levels which may well be lower than, than at present. When it comes to the EU expectations uh, in this process uh, uh, on economic governments, there are two general economic criteria, as you know, for EU membership. The, firstly, the existence of a functioning market economy, and secondly, the capacity to face the competitive pressure and market forces within the EU. Both of these are highly relevant uh, in the present Serbian context. The last few years, as we've heard today, have seen substantial government spending uh, supporting the still significant role of the state. As a result, the public debt increased quite rapidly, and at the same time, reforms to increase the competitiveness of Serbia's private sector have been delayed. So Serbia, in a sense, has arrived in a situation which is not unfamiliar from some EU member states, but where public finances risk becoming unsustainable and in combination with a private sector that faces severe challenges to compete on an ever more international and globalized market. And it's precisely that combination which the European Union has been trying to tackle through the approach of the European semester, ensuring sound public finances while at the same time fostering economic growth. The European semester is a, effectively a yearly cycle of economic policy guidance and country-specific surveillance, which doesn't always come very welcome to EU member states, but the European Commission undertakes a detailed analysis of member states' programs of economic and structural reforms over the first six-month period of each year and provides recommendations for the next 12 to 18 months. In Serbia, what is clear and highly encouraging is that policymakers have fully realized the seriousness of the situation faced. Uh, as we heard uh, last week, the government issued its program of fiscal consolidation. This contains solid elements aimed at curbing government spending, which is obviously now necessary and overdue. The challenge will be the implementation, and here I'm thinking in particular of the decisions to reduce both subsidies and spending on goods and services by various government institutions. As the government has made abundantly clear, this package will have to be accompanied, as it is indeed under the European semester, by structural reforms to improve the competitiveness of the economy and of the private sector. As we heard from Minister Radulovic, the government has made some good first steps with regard to these reforms. We heard about the restructuring of socially owned enterprises, which 
can be expected to lead to more efficient functioning and lower subsidies. And we heard about the next crucial steps on that road this week. In addition, the government last year abolished many so-called parafiscal charges, which is something that has been welcomed, I think, by business, albeit as something that was long overdue. These are all necessary reforms, but we do need to see action in a number of other areas. And again, uh, I think there's, a, uh, there's a, an overlap between what I will say and what we heard from, the, from Monsieur Coin. Uh, firstly, undoubtedly, reforming the labor market and rewriting the labor law, mainly, well, in particular aimed at making it easier and less costly for employers to engage new personnel. This is an essential point given the high unemployment that we also heard about. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's good that the government has publicly committed to having this new law adopted by the end of this year, as I understand it. Second, uh, and also when it comes to uh, measures to improve the business climate, I very much welcome the changes which have been announced to the law on planning and construction to deal especially with the issue of construction permits. But more is needed. We particularly need to see more in the areas of establishing a level playing field amongst companies, the enforceability of contracts, uh, and dealing with the mismatch between Supp labor supply and demand. And clearly, there are further huge challenges uh, in the uh, reform of pensions and the health sector, uh, but also uh, in education and bringing the uh, education system more in line with the needs of the labor market. Now, of course, it will primarily be for Serbia's leadership to deal with these issues. But the EU will continue to support Serbia. Uh, the day after tomorrow, we will issue our annual progress report on enlargement. And this will assess progress made in all 35 chapters that I've referred to. And it will offer some very concrete information for the government uh, and more widely on which areas will require uh, efforts to be stepped up. The policy dialogue that we have established with the authorities now under the Stabilization and Association Agreement and looking ahead to the me first meeting of the Council on the 21st of October can I hope be used to discuss how this could be done. I think a feature of this year's strategy paper on EU enlargement to be issued together with the progress report will be that economic governance will feature as a top priority. The European Union will step up its efforts to associate enlargement countries with the economic coordination which is going on inside the EU under the European semester. There will be a bigger role for the European Commission in giving recommendations to enlargement countries on how to address their, how to address their economic challenges. And the same goes for the area of labor and social policy. Uh, only a couple of weeks ago, uh, the Commissioner Andor, responsible for uh, employment and social policy, visited and established and launched the e employment and social reform program with Serbia as the first country in the region to do that. And of course, we will continue to uh, work with the Serbian government in delivering programs and projects under uh, uh, the EPA funding uh, to be supportive of the government's efforts. Uh, and uh, private sector development and support to private sector development will undoubtedly be a key priority in the next programming period of 2014 to 2020. So thank you for your, for your attention. Um, I don't want to hold the minister up if he uh, needs to, but thank you very much, minister, for staying. I know you have something very pressing to, to go to, but thank you for staying for this discussion. Thank you.